a beautiful evening in bengaluru city this is bangalore cafe on fever 104 fm i am rj adarsh i am in the studio today with dr ragu nagraj he is a senior orthopedic consultant at fortis cunningham road and banergatha road this show this special campaign called surgeon on air is brought to you by sironix and arthroscopy division of healthium welcome to the show doctor thank you adarsh how are you doing today it's always like you ask the patients how you're doing today yes. for a change i want to ask the doctor how you're doing today yeah thanks a lot i'm really doing good mm-hmm. and um, it's a good day today mm. so and i'm feeling really good uh, being in this studio thanks mm. for uh, uh, taking me on board in this uh, studio mm. so how are you doing i'm doing well thank you for asking me yeah. i think you you're also used to it you're also used to asking people how they are doing because that's like such an important part of we also do that yes. but on a very different level like i can't cure them for example <laughs> maybe make them laugh or play some music mm-hmm. so uh, uh, entertainment on a different level yeah. uh, doctor mm-hmm. i want to start with a little bit of understanding of how you chose this career path Okay. how you got into this journey mm-hmm. i want before we start about the specifics mm-hmm. of orthopedic or joint related issues mm-hmm. i want to get to know you okay uh, see i did my mbbs from bangalore medical college uh, okay. i passed out from bangalore medical college in 2002 mm-hmm. uh, i was always interested in orthopedic since my mbbs days so so that's how i got into my uh, ms orthopedics when i was doing my ms orthopedics in 2005 orthoscopy and sports medicine was still the upcoming field in india not many doctors were uh, practicing this and we used to attend uh, uh, cmas uh, being conducted by the uh, organizations especially the speakers were more from uh, abroad international uh, faculties so when i used to hear them i always uh, find quite intrigued about this subject mm. because it's mm. not very well known in india still in that time and only very handful of surgeons were practicing that so that's how i developed interest in this and and being a, a, f- a fitness conscious and a sports person myself of course not into professional level i'm an amateur sports or uh, or a weekend uh, recreational sports we person we can we can see that you're yes. you play sports on a very regular <laughs> basis so <laughs> that that's how i developed interest in this sports medicine mm. and uh, uh, one more thing when we when we were studying this sports medicine we got to know that the the percentage of uh, athletes uh, sustaining this injury is quite high yeah. in india especially so that's how i developed interest in that and uh, somehow i uh, found very uh, uh, interesting to know how these injuries happen and how can we prevent them mm. or rather than treating we should focus more on preventing the injuries that's how mm. i developed interest in that and after that i did my after my ms orthopedics i did my fellowships in sports medicine in india uh, basically from coimbatore and also i went abroad uh, like in south africa france and also germany where i uh, developed my uh, further training in orthoscopy and then came back in 2009 and uh, started practicing sports medicine since 2009 in bangalore okay my first uh question to you about orthopedic what are the common complaints that people usually come to you with like the most yeah heard of uh see the most common uh, complaint uh, with which the patient comes to our opd is pain pain mm. in the joint pain in the bones and muscles mm. it could be a uh, in a single part of the body like mm. any one particular joint or mm. it could be diffuse like a multiple areas of the body depending on their uh, etiology of pain uh, after pain it is the swelling in the joints mm. could be uh, in any of the joint or it could be swelling in the muscle so pain and swelling is the most common uh, presentation with which the patients comes to our opd yeah okay so it's pain so yes. the starting thing is like uh, i have a pain here there's yes. a joint pain over there or in multiple places multiple places okay yes. when they come in i know i'm sure you have your ways how do you know what kind of a pain it is yes uh, see we have a certain uh, 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 characteristics of uh, individual pain hmm. so we will see whether the pain uh, has started by itself like what we call as an insidious onset hmm. or whether it has started following uh, an episode of injury hmm. again having said that injury it could be a uh, acute a uh, single traumatic incident or mm. it could be repetitive stress injuries mm. what we call as an rsi so depending on the 
type of etiology whether it is started by itself insidious or whether it's following a traumatic injury we'll get to know certain things what could be the reason for the pain mm. and also the types of pain whether it's a dull aching or whether it's a sharp pricking pain mm-hmm. or it's like a burning shooting pain mm. so depending on the characteristic of the pain we'll assess we'll get an idea what exactly the patient could be suffering from so we have certain things which we go through yeah mm. when they say pain uh, what does it signify what does it what is its underlying condition what does pain generally signify yes what? uh see when when the patient says that they have a pain hmm. uh, it could be uh, due to injury to any part of the body like hmm. uh, could be a ligament tear or could be a meniscus tear or could be a cartilage damage in the joint if you talk about any other part of the body like a tendon it could be a tendinitis in the uh, tendon particular tendon like could be a, like a tennis elbow you must have heard of uh, a tennis elbow or a runner's knee that's mm. called as a patella tendinitis mm. so that means there is an inflammation in the tendon mm. so the pain could be originating from the structure to the da- you know uh, damage to the structure of the body or could be from the inflammation in that particular part of the body mm. so two things damage to the structure or inflammation these are the two main uh, reasons why the pain comes okay what are some of the risk factors that might lead for these conditions to take place it can be a runner's elbow a runner's knee or a tennis elbow yes. we're talking about these conditions what are some of the risk factors of course like playing is definitely yes. one of the reasons but what are some of the other risk factors that can cause these things uh see if if you want to ask what are the risk factors there mm. are, there are m- many in fact okay. but to name a few the most common risk factor first first thing would like to talk about is the age uh uh-huh. in younger age group yes the risk factor is very high because of their aggressiveness you yeah. know whether it could be uh, on field or off field mm. because of their aggressiveness yes pay, uh, people between 22 30 35 i would say are more prone for injuries mm. i would say mm. and if you're talking about the inflammation or tendinitis it is more often seen in middle aged or slightly uh, aged category because mm. of their uh age related uh, hmm. structural hmm. damage hmm. or degeneration of the uh, structures hmm. or it could be a repetitive stress injury hmm. so because with age because of the lack of warm up because of the lack of stretching exercises they generally develop tightness in the tissues hmm. and when they have tightness in the structure and when they try to play on weekends then they are more prone to develop this tendinitis or it could be an injury hmm. so talking about the other risk factors weight weight is another uh, risk factor hmm. if the bmi is on a higher side hmm. yes they are more prone for injury because hmm. of the high load on the joints yeah. and also because of the tendency to fall correct all right and the other risk factors are is especially in, in in case if you have to consider a knee ligament injury that is mm. an ac ligament injury mm. females are more prone towards okay. it because okay. of the various anatomical factors because mm. of their body structure and the composition mm. they are more prone for developing acl tear okay. especially when they participate in sports okay so yes uh, female sex is one of the risk factors in mm. sports related injuries mm. Mm. and the other risk factors are uh, you know the bio uh, what you call as a musculo skeletal related issues if their joints are stiff Hmm. if the mobility if the range of motion in the joint is less hmm. or if their balancing and the proprioceptive level of function in the joint is less hmm. so these all these factors will lead to you know uh, predispose them to injuries or uh, the fall leading them to injuries yeah hmm. what if we start neglecting the pain because that happens once in a while Mm-hmm. that i know until and unless it becomes like unbearable people are like ha huh, it'll go it's probably due to strain yes. that's what people generally assume right yes. what if we neglect the pain and uh, learn to live with it is that possible or do you think you sometimes know you have to go to the doctor otherwise it won't solve on its own yes uh see not all pain uh have a, a long term consequences hmm. most of the pain which comes due to the mild sprain or strain due to a milder form of injuries they generally heal Hmm. if you take a certain amount of rest and uh, uh, basic treatment like uh, ice pack rest and compression they all heal but certain things what one should watch out for what we call as red flags are excessive pain if hmm. the pain is intolerant if it is coming in their way of day to day activities a lot of activities suppose sitting and getting up climbing stairs walking swimming hmm. any of the activity is being 
are interrupted because of this pain then yes they should watch out for that particular pain because it could be uh, due to some structural damage mm. and also if they have swelling in the joints or in any part of the body mm. then definitely yes it should be evaluated mm. and also certain things like you, you probably must have heard of popping or locking in the joints yeah yeah it happens yes here. yes uh, it happens in the knee it happens in the shoulder it mm. happens in any joint it mm. could happen in any joint mm. so if you have this uh, locking episode in the joint mm. or kind mm. of any popping feeling in the joint mm. all those things <laughs> are sim- signs and symptoms to be watched out for or at least it should be evaluated to know what is the reason for it yeah and last and the most important is instability mm. suppose if there is a knee injury if the athlete prefers to ignore it mm. of course the pain and swelling what they develop after that first acute injury it always settles down subsides mm. by itself mm. but if they ignore that and if they start developing instability and if they ignore that instability that can lead to long term consequences like repeated instability can lead to structural damages like meniscus cartilage and which eventually lead to arthritis mm. at a younger age mm. so that's why instability symptom should not be ignored mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, we have to make our joints stronger as in like to prevent injuries therefore prevent the treatment if we have to start with the prevention which is always better than cure yes. as always it's said how can one increase or make better the health of the joint Yes that that's a very important question and mm. which is the highlight of the uh, today's topic mm. prevention mm. rather than the treatment yes mm. so what i would like to start uh, with answering this particular question is mm. everyone should do exercises of course that's how they uh, can make their joint better mm. but yes starting the exercises by themselves without knowing how much intensity uh, they should do and how long what is the duration of the exercises mm. that could be hazardous mm. so one should my suggestion is one if any person wants to get into sports if they want mm. to develop uh, or uh, you know want to develop a new uh, habit of playing sports they should get evaluated once to mm. they should they should be what you call as a musculoskeletal screening that's an important thing in any uh, sports field mm. musculoskeletal screen we will assess how their individual joints are okay. how their movements are in the joint and mm. how is the function of individual joints what is the range of motion also called as a mobility and uh, is there any uh, structural changes in the in individual joint or how is their balancing or biomechanical function of the joint mm. all these things will be assessed first to know yes this particular athlete is now fit to go on to the field or start playing sports okay that's the initial uh, screening program mm. once that is done then they should start a particular structured exercise program mm. i would say it's always better to do start or do the exercises under a supervision of a physiotherapist mm. or a particular trained coach mm. so that they know exactly how to start about and you should always start slow you shouldn't you shouldn't just jump and start doing uh, for example an hiit uh, workout mm. uh, all of a sudden that mm. that could be hazardous you know mm. that and you must have read a lot of incidences in the newspaper because of that yeah, yeah, yeah. so yes one should start always very slow mm. and gradually and gradually increase it or pace it up mm. increase the intensity city also and also increase the duration because over a period of time you always develop the agility and the stamina mm. and also the endurance mm. so build your endurance and stamina over a period of time not mm. overnight mm. so once so always take it slow exercises increase it and apart from the exercises one should take care of their diet mm. so hydration is very important okay. one yeah, should yeah. be adequately hydrated dehydration can make the tissues stiff mm. and prone for Yes. Mm. So you should always be adequately hydrated and also you should have a good diet composition. Mm. Protein is definitely the most important. It, it, it's always the neglected part of our diet in mm. Indian mm. continent. Especially. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay. We never focus on how much protein are we taking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because yeah. I that's all I hear about <laughs> these days. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh protein I d- doesn't mean that it always have to be supplement. Mm. It could be in a food also. Yeah, yeah. But yes, approximately 1 gram per kg of body weight per day is mm. the uh, mm. recommended intake. Mm. So protein intake and adequate exposure to sunlight to have a, a good amount of vitamin D and the calcium uh, mm. levels in our body. Mm. So diet and uh, hydration is also plays an important role. Mm. third and the most important thing is when they are playing sports when they are involved in uh, physical activity they should uh, 
try to protect their joints either by using a protective equipment so one one should be well versed with that particular sports that what are all the type of protective gears available for that particular sport so that they can use it and they can protect you know their joints or structures from being injured talk to us a little bit doctor about how it is common these days and how one can avoid or try to cure arthritis yeah 12th october being world arthritis day yes if we can prevent arthritis overall as a population yes. or if you know it's unavoidable if it's genetic mm-hmm. uh, how to uh, you know cure it at the very earliest level uh, yes 12th october is the world arthritis day and we all know that the prevalence and the incidence of arthritis is on the rise hmm. the number of people suffering from it is increasing year after year and it always uh, uh, considered that arthritis only affects an elderly population but that's not true we see a lot of arthritis in the younger population now. it is not now it does it's been there uh, from many years why particularly because arthritis is not always age related it could be an inflammatory arthritis inflammatory arthritis means there'll be high level of inflammatory factors in the body it mm. could be a rheumatoid arthritis or it could be a uric acid or a crystal related arthritis or it could be a seroreactive reactive like following a bout of viral fever one should one might would have experienced multiple joint pains oh yeah yes so that's that. also a kind of arthritis what mm. we call is a reactive arthritis it's mm. a body reaction to the viral fever mm. so these things can these this uh, type of arthritis can affect younger age group so arthritis have started uh, uh, being seen in younger age group quite often and also i would like to mention on the injury related arthritis which is uh, particularly a little close towards the topic that we are discussing on so injury related arthritis means if the patient has suffered a knee injury or an ankle injury which would have resulted in the ligament tears mm. if that is not being treated on time mm. the patients or athlete would have experienced a multiple episodes of instability where mm. the bone you know loses balance and they go out of its position and comes back mm. every time that happens there'll be pain and swelling yeah. but within few days it gets better that's mm. how patient feels that yes is got better and mm. it, it's it's a regular day to day yeah. affair but that would always lead to arthritis because every time when there is a loss of balance the bones rub against each other and the cartilage will start becoming you know uh, worn out mm. of course it, it takes uh, many years to reach that stage but yes the speed of arthritis is always multiplied in such patients who neglect their uh, ligament injuries in knee shoulder or any any joint for that matter hmm. so yes arthritis is definitely a very high prevalence what one should do uh, to prevent that depends on the particular type of arthritis but yes the most common recommendations are exercises one should always be you know uh, be regular with their uh, exercises whether it could be a strengthening form of exercises or it could be their regular cardiac type of exercises like a, a walk for a uh, half an hour to 40 minutes or could be swimming cycling mm. it could be any form of exercise but first everyone should get involved in some form of physical uh, workout mm. but yes one should also know how exactly and what uh, you know what is their limit of uh, working out and one should analyze their body for okay. that uh, whether mm. suitable or not mm. and other things are as i said diet diet also plays an important role but certain genetics uh, re- uh, related arthritis like uh, rheumatoid arthritis mm. can be controlled and can be treated sometimes with the regular medications and a regular follow up with the doctors mm. but yes it's always important to get evaluated what type of arthritis they are suffering from because most of the arthritis have got treatment yeah. mm. most of the arthritis can yeah. be treated yes yeah so you have to go to the doctor as soon as you see something wrong instead of like thinking oh my mother had it so i'll obviously have yes. it can't be cured mm. kind of a thing okay thank you for that answer doctor does the weekend recreational sports practices affect joint health as well because yeah like with this city life mm-hmm. um i don't think people do sports daily and yes. maybe a little bit of like running or swimming if you have like 30 to 45 minutes yes. mm, but uh, sports usually is played over the weekend yes. be it badminton table tennis mm. or f- football stuff like that so mm. does that also affect joint health or it's fine no see sp- ex- sports any any form of sports is very important to maintain joints whether mm. it's on regular basis like a professional sports or on weekend like amateurs or recreational athletes mm. but yes what is more important is uh how to get 
and how to how to uh, prevent themselves from sustaining injuries that's mm. more important mm. because throughout the weekday they would uh, had their hectic uh, working schedule mm. and all of a sudden they can't get up and go and play for an hours together so that's the switch between sedentary yes, and active and active that mm. that should be always slow and gradual mm-hmm. or also during their weekdays they should be involved in some form of uh, stretches or workout or strengthening program mm. so yes one should be fit and you know keep themselves fit to enable themselves to you know to play or enjoy the f- sports mm. because mm. we all know you know participating in a sports is very important f- both physically and mentally mentally yes yeah, yeah. yeah so if you want to be really involved in sports mm. whether it's on weekend or on regular basis you should be fit you should mm. take care of your joints mm. by regular exercises warming up stretches and day to day you know the diet and the hydration part yes okay i have a final question for you is there a cure to these conditions or does it heal naturally and if you could talk about some treatment options that uh, is there right now that is available for these issues that people have mm-hmm. joint related issues arthritic issues all right yes uh, see so not all injuries uh, need surgical intervention mm-hmm. majority of the injuries which uh, we would call as a grade 1 or grade 2 or a mild or moderate where it is a partial tear or it is just a strain or uh, a strain of the tendon or the ligaments they do heal conservatively mm-hmm. but yes uh, evaluation is the most important thing when they sustain injuries when they meet the doctor we always evaluate them to know what is the grade of the injury uh, whether it's a partial or a complete tear of the ligament in the knee so once that is being evaluated which it, it could be mainly with a clinical examination on some cases where the injury is bad we might uh, uh, no so, um, make them undergo uh, x-rays and mri investigations mm. so once all the evaluation is done majority of the injuries treated conservatively hmm. uh, with a period of rest support will give them support to that particular injury if the knee injury will give them the knee cap or a knee brace hmm. and ice packs and compression hmm. so once that period of rest is over it could be 2 weeks 3 weeks or it sometimes it could go up to 6 weeks depending on the type of injuries hmm. so once that period of rest is over we always subject them to rehabilitation hmm. we'll get them back onto the uh, active uh, life first we will start mobilizing them we'll mm-hmm. get the mobility first once the mm-hmm. mobility is uh, regained then we'll focus on the strengthening mm-hmm. once both mobility and strength is regained then mm-hmm. as i said earlier we will fo- you know make them uh, do balancing and proprioception exercises once they all done yes they are all now you know get, get ready get to get back to the sport. field yes get back to the field but yes certain injuries like a complete acl tear which mm. is the most common knee injury nowadays uh, uh, everywhere all over around the globe yeah they need surgical intervention mm. because that cannot be treated conservatively untreated acl as i said earlier it leads to more and more damages like meniscus cartilage and subsequently arthritis mm. so complete acl tear or it if there is a recurrent dislocation in the shoulder mm. in overhead athletes mm. those things cannot be treated conservatively all mm. alone so mm. those patients need a minor surgical intervention mm. because most of the surgical intervention in the sports injuries are being done by arthroscopy which is just a keyhole uh, in surgery mm. where we will not open the joints we mm. just make a minor keyholes and mm. through the camera we repair the damaged part mm. so it's a very simple minimally invasive uh, arthroscopy surgeries mm. and recovery is very fast mm. just a period of rest for 2 to 3 weeks followed mm. by a rehabilitation the physiotherapy for a couple of months mm. and yes by 6 months most of the injuries once it's treated by orthoscopy can go back to their sports at their previous fitness level okay so it won't like it won't permanently change something no. because that's what people mostly are scared of yes, while going for surgery yes, it's does. like okay so it won't be the same after that okay but however if the injury is being neglected suppose mm. if they come uh, with a delayed presentation if mm. they have sustained an injury couple of years back mm. and then now when the pain has really become bad when they come where we know that apart from the ligament injury they also have an arthritis which has already started at oh. a very young age okay. yes then it is very difficult to go back to 100% mm. but yes still they will be much better than their current state mm. they can go back to the active lifestyle but mm. yes may not be to a 
100 percent professional pre-injury level mm. because they've already developed arthritis. Mm. That's why getting treatment for the ligament and the sports injuries at the right time is very important. And uh, any structural damage like an ACL or a labral tear or a meniscus tear should be uh, surgically treated, as I said earlier, with a minor orthoscopy surgery if it is really required. Mm. And then one should go back to sports following that. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today. That was Dr. Raghu Nagraj, Senior Orthopedic Consultant at Fortis Hospitals, Cunningham Road and Banargata Road. Surgeon on Air, a campaign by FIBA 104 FM is brought to you by Sironix, an arthroscopic division of Healthium. Thank you so much for joining me this evening on the show, Doctor. It was wonderful interacting with you. Thank you. Thank you, Adash, for having me in the studio and uh, uh, having a discussion on this, uh, on creating awareness uh, about the sports injuries in both the uh, professional and uh, weekend athletes. So it's an important topic to be you know, discussed about. Hmm. And thank you once again. Yeah. Thank you so much for that information and insight today, Doctor. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Fever.